shalom party people, welcome to the 12th seat. So lack of communication, or how about lack of effective communication? It's probably the number one reason as to why people mess up with, I mean, insert whatever. If it's getting the job done, if it's getting the job done right, if it's, you know, personal stuff, if it's family stuff, if it's romantic relationships, if it's friendships, you know, pick your poison. You're dealing with other people of any kind and there is a mistake made. Probably about the number one reason as to why there was a mistake made comes down to lack of communication or lack of effective communication. Why is that? Well, let's wrap for a minute. So, if you survey just about any job, you ask all of the employees, hey, what, what's the number one thing that you think people around here don't do well? And just about everybody is going to, in one way, shape, form, function, or fashion, is going to say, well, nobody communicates around here. Well, newsflash, that is not unique to your job. Newsflash, that is not unique to my job. And I'm talking to me just as much as I'm talking to anybody else about this. Lack of effective communication. What's that look like? Well, you're unclear lack context or clarity as to what you're actually trying to do, what your, what your desired outcome is, what those steps to getting there are. You may not even know what those steps are. Assumptions, and those assumptions come from the person who is trying to communicate and the person that they're trying to communicate with is gonna be making assumptions too. And then that's also going to come down to the fact that people are pretty bad listeners, myself included. A lot of times we're just listening so that way we can find out what's the next thing that's going to come out of our mouth. And a lot of times it's not even like, oh, hey, you know, this is the correct response necessary to what's going on. It's the, oh, hey, I have something to say. Man, I, I can't tell you how many times I've opened my mouth just because I like hearing myself talk. You know, it's, it's one of those that I, it bites people in the butt all the time, all the time. So, unclear, lack of context, poor communication style. A lot of times people don't take five seconds to... Okay, this is what I need. Very, very seldom does that happen. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer to, hey, here are my needs. This is what I know I have to do by myself. This is what, man, I could really use a lot of help because either I can't or I know you're better at this than I ever can dream of being. And or, dude, I just need help are pretty bad about that. I, I know for myself, a lot of times when, like, I've got too much for me to be able to do my, by myself, I'm very, very bad at articulating what I need. And it's just like, I can't think of the words, I can't think of the actions, I can't think of anything, and so it's like, just leave me alone and I'll figure it out on my, on my own. Those words may not be said, but like the help that gets offered isn't the help that you want or need. And then so you feel like you have to go back and rework stuff, but you don't know how to communicate that. <coughs> you assume that the other person just is going to know what you need. That other person is assuming that you're going to be able to say what you need. And then, or, oh, hey, I know exactly what they need. And that person goes and helps and then you end up spending half the day having to undo what help they were instead of hey so and so I really really need this and I need it done this way because if it is not done this specific way 
then you know it's time sensitive or it's gonna you know wreck my shalom or you know insert whatever but yes we need to be able to accept the help that's being given to us but we also need to know how to articulate what help we actually need because case in point there's some people out there who just scrape their dishes and toss them in the dishwasher and then there's some of us out there that we like to pre-wash our dishes before they even go inside the dishwasher and you know treat the dishwasher as a sanitizer and not what actually like washes dishes so when somebody's coming up and saying hey i need you to do the dishes and you're just one of those scrapers and toss it in the dishwasher then stuff doesn't get clean to the standard of the person who's asking you just assume oh hey you know it's no big deal i'm just gonna be helpful and toss it in there and not actually make that clear consistent communication of hey this is exactly what i need this is exactly how i need it and if it's not done this way like i'm not gonna have any peace about this and and then when it comes back and something bites me then i'm just gonna be all in a tizzy because I, I meant for my dishes to get fully clean and then I pull them out and there's stuff still stuck in this little corner over here and it's baked on now and it's even harder to get out so just those hey can you take an extra 30 seconds with that scrubbing side of that sponge run it under some water and, and knock all that crud off so that way it's good to go and then actually taking the time to listen to the input that's being given. All the time, all the time, we're half-heartedly listening. All the time, we're just like, oh, I know, you're assuming again, I know what's being said or being asked of me, so I'll just go ahead and do it. Or, man, I, I know how to do this, this is no big deal and not actually take the time because maybe those instructions have changed. Maybe they've updated. Maybe we thought this way was working before, but it's not, so we're going to try this new way. Maybe it's, hey, I've worked around people like you my whole life, and I know what you need, and you know I'm going to help you out as best I can, and then you've misjudged somebody. It happens all the time lack of effective communication can come up and bite you in the butt and then it leaves people really upset because they don't feel heard, they don't feel valued they don't, they don't feel like they're actually getting stuff done either and then, oh hey I'm not even going to bother asking for help because it never works out it happens all the time but what are some ways we can combat this? Number one, we need to regularly, regularly check in with the people that we're working with. Before we start a task, before we assign a task, whatever, have a briefing beforehand. Hey, this is what needs to be done. This is the scope of the work that we're going to be dealing with today. You know, some places have a safety meeting before they get going. Hey, Here's all the things that could go wrong. Not only all the things that could go wrong, but this is everything that we need to get done. This is everything that we might have to do. This is, you know, just a war game it out. List everything that has got to get done, everything that can go wrong. Get it all, all out there. Get it on paper if you have to. You know, oh, hey, I didn't even consider that idea. Let's try that. Have a pre-game briefing. Have regular updates. Regular updates. All throughout the entire time of stuff working. Check in. Hey, this is how it's going. Man, it's not going the way I wanted it to be going. And I'm, I'm fighting an uphill battle. Man, this is checking this off. No big deal. Got this done. Got this done. You know, it's a real easy peasy lemon squeezy. Then you need to have an after action report. 
this is everything we did right. This is everything that went wrong. This is how we mitigated what went wrong. This is what we need to fix. Every bit of that has got to be before, during, and after a constant lines of communication open. You need to write down what you need communication wise is very very important it's not just verbal write it down I don't care if it's on a whiteboard a note card the back of your hand you know in the notes app on your phone you know piece of paper your diary like I like write it down that's just it's so much easier to go back and track this is what needs to get done. This is what actually got done. Let's celebrate the wins, and let's go back there and address the losses. Document everything. And how often do we think we're gonna remember something and we don't? More than we think. A lot more than we think. Going in and actually writing stuff down super super important having budgets and timelines attached to it so that way you're you're not just writing down a goal but you're actually making it like a legit action item that you can do verify what's being done so you've got a goal you've got an action item you need to have people who can keep you accountable to it if it can be done, hey, this is my plan. Here it is in writing. Hold my feet to the fire, check me in, you know, whatever needs to be done on it. Ask questions. You know, you're giving the briefing, hey, this is what I need. It's not wrong to say, hey, do you know how to do that? It is not wrong to say, hey, here's the instructions. Do you need me to give those to you again? Do you need me to walk you through it? Do you need me to watch while you're doing this once or twice? So that way you know that I know that we're on the same page. Do you need more help with this? Have I given you too much? Have I given you not enough? but also you on the receiving end, ask questions. Hey, you know, I know you said you wanted it this way. Is that, you know, cutting the sandwich diagonally? Is it cutting it straight across? Is it cutting the crust off? You know, sometimes cutting it in half, people have different definitions of half. Getting clarification on stuff, asking follow-up questions. Do it once. Hey, did I do this the way you wanted me to do it? Do it twice. Hey, just get a second set of eyes on this. Does this look good to you? Cool. You need to welcome questions. If you are the normal, hey, this is what I what I need. And somebody asks that question of, is this exactly what you're looking for? Is this exactly the best way that I can help you? You need to not shut them down when they're actually asking those questions. They're asking for a reason. And I know sometimes those questions aren't always the, the easiest to feel, the easiest to deal with. But when people are asking questions that usually, not always, that usually means that they are halfway trying to accomplish what's being given. And then probably the hardest part of effective communication, the timing of the delivery of certain things. Sometimes when you've got to communicate with somebody, it's a right now thing. And if it's not communicated right now, it's a problem. Sometimes that needs to wait. And if it doesn't wait, it's a problem. But also, 
there's situations where when you're dealing with something that like it's a contentious topic but it has got to get addressed it's got to get addressed sometimes before it gets worse and if it's not in that situation where, hey, we're, we got to rip this Band-Aid off, clean this wound, and then, you know, redress it, and then actually get into what's going on with it, and you just leave it be, oh, it'll be fine, and then it gets infected, and it festers, and it leads to worlds, worlds more problems knowing when, hey, this needs to be addressed and this needs to be addressed right now versus, hey, we got to let this sit for just a second before we get into what this is, but this has got to be addressed. That timing is critical in a lot of situations. I would love to hear your productive comments on this lack of communication, lack of effective communication probably the number one reason why people mess up on things all the time. Right now, I'm wanting to go through a list of the top 12 reasons why people fail when they're trying to accomplish something. And whether that's personal, whether that is a you know relationship goal, whether that's a work goal, whatever. Um, top 12 reasons why people fail uh, this comes from a list called the Dirty Dozen, and they're human factors as to why things go wrong. Love to hear more from you guys, and there's there's going to be more on this end. Go do hard things.